For all the best tips and strategies, check out the Ultimate Utility app. Links are available in the description. If you're a longtime Call of Duty player, any rendition of a plantable explosive may give you fits of rage. From claymores to bouncing Bettys to IEDs, these are all more or less free easy kills when used. Now in Call of Duty World War II, we have the S-Mine. This is a deployable pressure activated mine that lifts into the air before detonation. It has a 4 meter blast radius, which is the smallest blast out of all the lethal items. I'll be showing you just how big this radius is with in-game examples in just a minute. The main goal of this video is to try and break down all the ways you can avoid dying to these trip mines. And believe it or not, it's not as cut and dry as you'd think. However, the game does offer multiple ways to avoid almost certain death if you know what to do. So first of all, these are some of the hardest items to see in any Call of Duty game I've ever played. They're small, they're a dark green color, and half of the mine itself is covered in the ground. The odds of you spotting one of these in the midst of combat are slim to none. Luckily, however, once triggered, they offer a loud noise to at least alert you of your impending death. You can also hear an enemy plant these from a good distance away, but you have to be actively listening for the sound. So let's talk countermeasures. Timing is everything when it comes to the S-Mine. You have 0.967 seconds from the moment you hear the trigger until it explodes in your face. What you do in that time frame determines life or death. Now in order to understand survivability of the S-Mine, we need to first look at the blast radius itself. As I mentioned earlier, it's 4 meters. And this is what 4 meters looks like in game. It's a fairly decent range considering how lethal this thing can be. This is also the maximum triggering distance. Now what division you're running, what basic training skill you have equipped, as well as where you're standing when the mine does explode, all affect your odds of surviving. The first thing to point out is major. If you're standing directly under the mine when it explodes, you'll die, no matter what. Even with the hunker basic training skill or a fully maxed out armor division, if you're standing dead center of the blast radius, you will die. And by the way, if you haven't seen my hunker review video, it's identical to a fully maxed out armor division. So anytime I reference one of these two things, you can safely assume the other one does the exact same thing. I'll also be calling this the flak jacket effect. Now standing without hunker or the armor division at any range of the blast will also kill you 100% of the time. This is the max 4 meter range and it's still disposed of me easily while standing. Now with the flak jacket effect equipped, you'll survive the blast while standing as long as you're not directly under it. So you can survive at 2 meters, 3 meters, and obviously 4 meters. If you're standing within that 1 meter blast radius though, even with hunker, you'll die. So clearly, the flak jacket effect in this game works well at defending against the S-Mine. Now we'll look at kneeling. Without hunker or the armor division, a direct impact while kneeling will still kill you 100% of the time. And again, by direct impact, I mean within the 1 meter distance. This time, however, anything outside of the 1 meter distance and you'll survive while kneeling. So if you trigger it and you're 2, 3, or 4 meters away and kneeling, you'll survive. It's imperative that you kneel no matter what when you hear you've triggered an S-Mine. As long as you're not directly on top of it, you'll survive. Now with the flak jacket effect, kneeling will make you 100% completely immune to instant death against the S-Mine. Even if you're within that 1 meter blast radius, as long as you're kneeling, you'll survive. So the same remains true with or without hunker or the armor division. You should always kneel when you've triggered a mine. So how about going prone? If you can manage to do it quick enough, which surprisingly is rather difficult, you can survive 100% of the time as well, even with a direct impact. And this is without any form of flak jacket. So if you're good at proning quick on the draw, this is the most reliable way to never die from an S-mine again. Now I always get stuck in the kneel to prone animation though, which allows the mine to explode before I get all the way prone. So those are all the positional ways to avoid the S-mine. But those were also with me just standing still. When you trigger a trip mine, chances are you're in mid sprint. So let's now take a look at that. If you trigger a mine while sprinting through it, you'll still die unless you have hunker or the armor division. Just as we established earlier, being anywhere within the blast radius without the flak jacket effect will kill you while you're standing. However, if you do the dive animation, you'll survive. It doesn't matter if the explosion happens even while you're mid-dive, you'll still survive. 
The dive effect is essentially the same as if you're kneeling to prone, which at the outskirts of the blast will still allow you to live without the flak jacket effect. Now these last examples were someone sprinting through the trigger and explosion process. If you happen to be walking up to the S mine and then trigger it, you can then safely sprint outside of the kill radius. You have to sprint the moment you hear it triggered though, which allows you to get enough distance away to survive. So we've just established that you can't out sprint a trip mine blast radius without the hunker or armor division's flak jacket effect, unless you sprint the moment you hear it trigger. Now there's an exception to this, and it comes with the airborne division. A fully maxed out airborne division can sprint safely through an S mine. With this, you can just be mid sprint and still sprint further than the kill zone. And this is due to the sprinting bonuses you receive when you level up the airborne division. I should also note that it doesn't matter if you're holding a pistol or a primary. Both will allow you to sprint enough distance away to survive. Now let's look at the flanker basic training skill. This skill has a bonus effect which says it delays detonation of enemy mines. As I covered earlier, without flanker you have 0.967 seconds before you die. Now with Flanker, this time is massively delayed to 2.517 seconds. So Flanker gives you a whopping 1.55 second time frame to get out of the blast radius. And just look how far away you can sprint in this time frame. 1.55 seconds is so long, you can actually walk through, trigger the mine, and still get far enough away to avoid damage altogether. This makes Flanker an incredibly valuable tool against the S mine. Now the last countermeasure to the S mine is with the instincts basic training skill. One of the best counters to these deadly mines is obviously to avoid them altogether. As I said earlier, they're very small and they camouflage easily into the gritty World War II maps. With instincts, not only do they turn a burnt orange color, but they'll also flash, which should help you notice them better. Now unfortunately, there is a drawback here. While you can see them through some walls, you can't see them through all walls. It appears to be just through the thinner types. I'd also argue that it's difficult to notice that flashing orange color in the midst of combat. Still, it does do what it's intended to do, which is help you notice these inconspicuous trigger devils more easily. And that, as they say, is that. As I hope I've established with this video, there's a lot more ways to counter the S mine than most people think. So to do a little recapping here, Going prone will always allow you to survive the explosion no matter what. With a direct impact, which is within 1 meter of the S mine's 4 meter blast radius, you'll die no matter what while standing, even with the hunker or armored basic training skill. If you're within 2 to 4 meters of the blast and standing, you'll still die without the flak jacket effect, but with it, you'll survive. A kneeling direct impact will still kill you without the flak jacket effect, but you'll survive with it. Now kneeling outside the direct impact radius will allow you to survive no matter what. Sprinting through the triggering and explosion process will still kill you without flak jacket, but you'll survive with it. Likewise, having a maxed out airborne division or the flanker skill will also allow you to sprint through it safely. Now if you sprint right after triggering a mine, you'll also still survive. In the same manner, if you can dive after triggering one, you'll also always survive. With walking through one though, you'll only survive with flak jacket and the flanker skill. And of course, to avoid them altogether, you can simply run the instinct skill. So with the knowledge gained from this video, you should be well on your way to never dying from an S mine again. Or at least most of the time.